I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. I got it as a joke, but it's an actual good tool for syncing. It, no, it is. It's it's like, reasonable. I guess that's what it's it's sort of made for. Uh, well, yeah, that's that's explicitly what it's made for. It's made for syncing video to audio. Although yeah. in this case, it's, it's audio, audio to audio. Audio, to audio, yeah. Yeah. So my alarm just started going off. Ooh, this is good radio. Boop boop boop. There we go. I didn't even hear it. There's oh good. Well then, no one that didn't happen. But it did. No. Was the fan meter monster last week's? Yeah, it was. That was, yeah. Okay. Because I, I was like, I have this, like, fear that I forgot to post the research uh, every week. Yeah. Because um, uh, that's just... That's just how you are. Just, it's just, we just yeah. always live in fear. It, I, I live in constant fear. Um, What the... I For whatever reason, I was like, because I had my email open because I was trying to pay, fix something. Uh-huh. Um, and I was like going through my tabs and closing any of the like non cryptopedia related tabs. Mm -hmm. And, um, my Gmail, Luke Crate sent me an email. Oh, okay. And the email is wanna cyber winky face emoticon. Oh, loot box. You're nasty. Wow. They're nasty. They're nasty. I I also thought that they had gone under, but I guess not. There's still a thing. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I, I did Loot Crate a few times, mm-hmm. and I was always disappointed by Loot Crate. <laughs> there, I think everyone did Loot Crate, like, a couple times. Because it's like, I always am like, maybe it'll be good now. No, no it's not. No. Maybe it'll be good now. No, it's not. The mm. one time I did it, I, I did it to get a... They just sent me another email. Oh, oh wait, no, this is Loot Vault. No, this is still Loot Crate. What the hell? What are they trying to do? They're trying to sell me stuff for Dungeon Masters. It's, there's a dice holder for uh. eight, for four bucks, but it's like, I don't need a D20 dice holder. No. Nobody needs that. That's what Nobody needs a dice holder at all. Like, that's why they make ba- like just little bags. Bags are perfect for that. You yeah. don't need it. You don't need it. I mean, that's Crown Royale, man. I have a Mario bag. You have a Mario mine. bag? Yeah, I have a Mario bag. Well, because I got, I had those like gold points mm-hmm. for um, Nintendo, like the Nintendo like fan points or whatever oh, the yeah. heck it is. Mm-hmm. And I was able to afford a Mario bag. So I was like, I need a dice bag. So instead of using this plastic bag that I use all the time, yeah. like a little hefty bag, I'll just switch over to a, like a nice uh, velvety style thing. Nice. So now I got that, and I've had that for a decade. Oh, I did not expect it to be a decade. Yeah, I've had it for a while. Well, Ooh. it's closer to a decade than not. Let's yeah. just put it that way. Um. So this week, uh, so I, the the research that I did for this week's episode, okay, is a bit weird. Okay, how's that different from normal? It's not, but in this case, I was going to do another one mm-hmm. where I read a book. Oh, I hate books. I love books, but I was bad, and I didn't read the book because Pokemon came out. <laughs> so, I mean, Pokemon happens. Yeah, this, this week's episode is actually was supposed to be episode 54 originally, roughly. Yeah. Uh, but it's not. <laughs> I went Grookey. Um, huh? I went Grookey. I went Sobble, and I, I don't like Sobble, really. There's Sobble's just terrible. I don't like Sobble, I don't like Grookey, and I don't like uh, Score Bunny. I didn't like any of them, actually. You don't have to keep any of them. No, I know. I kept it because I felt guilty, but I didn't need to keep any of it. My favorite mm-hmm. Pokemon from this generation is Corviknight, but that's just me. Yeah, I don't the, have any um, favorites. Yet. I'm not that deep into it. What, what gym badge are you on? 
I don't have any gym badges. What? I, I just got to the part where they're like, go down Route 3. What? Yeah. Like you he, haven't even gotten to the wild area yet? No, I got to the wild area. Oh, okay. I went okay. through the wild area, and then I went to... I don't know the names of all the towns yet, but when you go to do the gym challenge, mm-hmm. you go up the lift, you stay over at the hotel, and then they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. go down Route 3. So I just yeah. went down Route 3. Oh my god, you're really early in the game still. Yeah. I, um... I I'm at I was at the point in the game where I started breeding Pokemon. So oh. right now I have a perfect Tyranitar, a perfect uh, Exadrill because I'm that person, um, a perfect Corviknight, and a perfect uh, Dragapult. It's like the Dragapult. Ghost Dragon. Okay. It's a Ghost Dragon. It's kind of cool. I'll have to try to get me one of them. Uh, it's hard to get them because they're in like an area that you need to be able to swim, like surf in mm-hmm. or whatever the equivalent is in this game. So it's like seven gym badges in Yeah, that you can get him. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, this is good. My, yeah. my, my, like I said before, my brain is just shot. It's fried, like completely fried. There's, I mean, that's fair. On the bright side, I think I might be getting a cold or a snored too hard. I don't know which one. Huh. So I'm trying to figure <laughs> that one out. I mean, do you have, like, a fever or anything? No. Like, I've got one nostril that's, like, maybe a little bit stuffy and my throat hurts. But it could just mm. be because I snore too hard. Because I do snore I'm, too hard. Yeah, that, that that's, like, nearly either snoring or post-nasal drip level. Yeah. You're talking about. So, Ooh. hmm. Anywho, I think, I think I'm going to start this week's episode because. I mean, you, you can. Because. Or we can keep talking about post-nasal drip. Uh, that, that does sound fun. Hmm. Um, but no. Uh, so this is Cryptopedia. Uh, I never write down my in- intro and it's become a bit at this point. I feel like. There's um, Perhaps. It might be. I, yeah. I don't know. Um, every week, every other week, I guess now, uh, we we talk about cryptids, monsters, ghosts, claims of the paranormal. Um, you can Carl. do it. Carl. Carl. Ah, oh, fucking mm-hmm. Carl. We talk about Carl. If if you haven't heard us talk about Carl, you just aren't listening close enough. There's. I still can't get him to come out from under my bed. No. Well, he's scared out of my underneath my bed because the cat kind of does this thing where he goes underneath the bed and crawls under, like, puts his claws on it and then just goes. Da-da-da-da-da. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he like zips across the mm-hmm. bed, yeah. underneath it, and because he's got the collar, it's really annoying because it's the combination of the claws going in and out of fabric and a collar with a bell on it being mm-hmm. drug along the floor. I don't know. He loves hanging out under my bed because my cats just keep spinning their heads around 360 degrees over and over and over and over. And yeah, just yeah, yeah. Saying some menacing things. It's kind of adorable. It is. No. It at, at first it's scary, but eventually you get used to it. Yeah. Um. Anywho, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And uh, this week's cryptid was first sighted in 1963. Okay, that's fairly it's, recent. Yeah, its taxonomy is humanoid. Okay. But Sasquatch question mark because it's one of those. Oh, I got gotcha. you. And the region is Louisiana. Uh, I'm gonna guess it's. Um, hang on, I'm going to just look up uh, Louisiana places. Okay. Is it the Bourbon Street Bigfoot? No. The Jack Square Sasquatch. No, I mean, you're, so you're close in terms of area. You're about 40 minutes out. Oh, am I? Yeah. Is it it's the close. Uh, Oak Alley asshole? I don't know. <laughs> it's just some real hairy, scary guy. All right. Well, um, I threw it in the, in the broadcast folder, uh, and it's called the Honey Island Swamp Monster. Ah, okay. Not to be confused with Honey Dipper Dan. Yeah, Honey Dip Honey Dipper Dan. Man, I miss Mad TV. I miss old Mad TV. The newer they had, they brought it back for a minute, and it was not great. Well, no, because they they had like a lot of weird animated segments in it that were like, like 
too far, I guess. I, I don't know how to describe it. But, like, the Will Sasso years were pretty great. Yeah. Will Sasso's just funny. Yeah. Um, I miss his vines. <clears throat> well, vine doesn't exist anymore. So. I know. It's never coming back. Well, it's tick. It's kind of like TikTok. I think is taking over. That's blasphemy. Just no. I I'm telling you what has happened. Just TikTok and, and Fortnite. I don't know. It's between those. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Fortnite's not that different from PUBG, and we played a it's lot. St- of that. Shut your shut your mouth, John. God damn it! Shut. I'm, sh- I'm, stop. I'm, stop it. Stop it. <sighs> All right. So I'm sure you have. You ever heard of the the Honey Island Swamp Monster? I have not. This is one of those weird cryptids where it like worked its way into my my consciousness. Like uh-huh. I didn't look, I wasn't hunting for this. Okay, I knew the name of the Honey Island. Swamp I monster. have never heard of it before. Like Momo, the Honey Island Swamp Monster, and the Folk Folk Monster. Yeah, are three cryptids that I know of. Okay, and I've we've done. Uh, this is two now of the three. Oh, okay, and I. I don't know. They just kind of like work their way into my consciousness. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of hard to describe, but regardless, the Honey Island Swamp is located in the eastern portion of the state of Louisiana, and it's about forty minutes outside of New Orleans. The swamp land, the swamp land, and I had to make a note here because it's kind of wild that swamps are called swamp land to me. I don't are know why. Really? Yeah, it, it's literally called swamp land. I mean, they're mana. It's true. It's true. Oh man, they banned Oko from uh, Standard, and Why? I'm suffering. Well, because because he was too good. He could he for f- basically free. He could turn someone into a three three elk, so you could get completely screwed up. Your entire like, like yeah. you could destroy someone. But I'm bad at magic. Do they know that? Well, yeah, they know that you're bad at magic. So it's banned for everyone but me. No, it's it's definitely banned for you too. Mm, I don't think so. Cuz cuz the problem is it makes people even even people who are bad at magic good at magic. Yeah, but I don't read the cards. That's true. I mean, really at the end of the day, no card should be banned for you because you're just not even going to use it to its full potential. Exactly. That's my point exactly. <laughs> um anywho, the swamp is approximately 70,000 acres. Um the Pearl River Wildlife Management Area takes up about, mm, well, no, exactly, because it's a wildlife management area, mm-hmm. 35,619 acres of the region, and is home to waterfowl, white-tailed deer, beaver, nutria, and coyotes. What's a um, nutria? Like, is that like a little, it, like, it's, rat It's like a type thing? of rodent. Yeah, yeah. it's like All a type right. of rodent. Um, they, they also have, like, hogs and stuff along those lines. They got hogs. Yeah. Um... So, according to the marketing blurb on the About Us section of, a, of the Cajun Encounters website, the swamp is considered by some to be the most pristine swampland habitats in the United States. Now, I'm going to take a moment here. The most pristine swamp. Yes. I'm so, just trying to think. I'm letting that sink in. Yeah. So, the, the, the implication is it's, like, untouched, right? Oh, okay. But here's the problem with that. So, I found this blurb on Wikipedia. Okay. Right? Cuz I when I when it comes to locations, I usually just go to the Wikipedia page. Mm-hmm. Um just because they're not at, like it's not like the point of our podcast. Yeah. Is the location. We just want like I want a general answer. Yeah. So, because I was curious about that cuz like honestly the pristine bit jumped out at me and I'm like what what is that? What does that mean in the context of things? Like, I want to make sure I understand this. So, I go to the go to the references. I click. I follow the link. It takes me to the Honey Island Swamp, uh, like page on yeah. Cajun Encounters. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh, cool. This is neat." So I'm like reading through it, and then I finally find the blurb that it came from. Yes. And I I attached a screenshot in the the show notes, mm-hmm. and it's literally word for word the first two paragraphs of the Wikipedia article. And then I get to the bottom of it, and I'm like, source, Wikipedia. Wait. Yeah. So I have discovered a total circular reference when doing research on the Holland Island Swamp. Oh, that's exciting. Um, so I was curious mm-hmm. 
so I then started looking at the Wikipedia page, and it turns out that that was edited by a user called uh, Wiki Swamps. Wait. In 2014. Wait. And I I I looked at what their w- Wiki Swamp is the name of it. So I clicked Contribs, right? Yeah. And I'm gonna open up the show chat here for a second. I'm gonna send that to you so you can verify. This is their their contribution list. There's and interestingly, it's only on the Honey Island Swamp. Huh. And the only thing that that contribution did was insert a reference to CajunEncounters.com slash Swamp Tour. That- Brandon, I think I found someone using Wikipedia for advertising. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they, 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 that's 100% what's going on. Yeah, because, like, well, I was like, what is going on here? Like... Why is this? Why are they? Why are they calling out Honey Island Swamp Tours when the other the other sources are Canoeing Louisiana, uh, which is a book mm-hmm. from the University Pr- Press of Mississippi, uh, Coastal Management Division's Gulf Ecological Management Site, Honey Island Swamp, yeah, and Monster Spotter's Guide to North America, which is related to the the swamp monster. Mm-hmm. I was just like. So, why is there a reference to a commercial business? Yeah, that's... We gotcha. So... They've been caught. Now, it might sound like a weird thing that I focused in on this, because, well, for one, it is. And I actually, I edited the Wikipedia page after this, after I found this, Mm -hmm. because that actually ticked me off enough. I I kid you not, I took an hour break from... (laughs) Wait. I took an hour break from research... Just to be like, uh, hey, I need to edit this on Wikipedia because I have oh, a Wikipedia God. account and I have yeah. I've actually edited stuff after doing research for this podcast in the past. Yeah. Uh, so this is not the first time that I've I've done something relating to this. This things I come across that are wrong on mm-hmm. Wikipedia. Um, but. Incidentally. This is more related to this podcast episode yeah. than I expected. Oh. So the whole like gorilla advertising commodification of mm-hmm. the swamp whole thing. Turns out that plays a big, big role in this episode. Yeah. Uh just to give you a little bit of uh whatchamacallit, it's uh foreshadowing. Um so let's get into let, let's let's put the co- the conspiracy abuse of Wikipedia aside for a minute, yes. and um, let's talk about how some believe that the swamp is home to more than the aforementioned small to medium creatures. And if you ask an individual by the name of Harlan Ford, who is currently deceased, it's home to the infamous Honey Island Swamp Monster. Nice. Now, according to the story told by Harlan the retired air traffic controller and his hunting buddy, Billy Mills, Mm -hmm. who is also a retired air traffic controller, um, they came face to face with a horrible creature. Supposedly, the duo found a set of four toed tracks in the mud, which ultimately led to a seven foot tall creature covered in grayish hair and having large amber colored eyes. So he's beautiful. He Um, gorgeous, a gorgeous. I'm just imagining flowing locks. Flowing oh, locks, just wavy and hair, like gently blowing in the eyes. wind. Yes, yes, in the swamp wind. Yeah, <laughs> it's got it. Like it, you know, he's he's flicking off all the the swamp scum as he pulls himself out of the bayou. He smells like fresh, freshly washed linens. Yes, I'm sure he smells perfect. Although there is an odor associated with him. Oh, is there? But, but they didn't describe it, so maybe it is. Freshly washed linens. I think the, I think Ocean Breeze is exactly what it smells like. Yeah, yeah. Um, so after that, the creature flees the scene, and the tracks are washed away. This is in 1963, okay? Um, at this point, the storytelling gets super hazy. Oh, I like it. So the primary source for this week's episode 
Um, uh, the primary source for this week's episode was a book written by Harlan's granddaughter, Dana Hollyfield. Okay. Now, I say this in the references, so in the, the show notes, they'll, it'll be here too. I really don't recommend buying this book. Oh, is it that good? Uh, well, so the problem with it, it's a $2 book, right? So okay. It's super cheap. But the problem with it is everything I'm about to tell you is the entire contents of the book. Oh, uh, maybe that's why it's a $2 book. It's only 40 pages long. Um, oh, I'm leaving yeah. some bits out because there's a letter that Harlan wrote and there's an interview with, with Billy Mills in there that I yeah. didn't think was terribly interesting because to me, the actual central focus point of this story is the Ford family mm -hmm. more than anything else. Um, so for the sake of episode time and not telling the same boring story 30 times over mm. i cut those sections okay um in the book they jump straight to 1974 at this point so about a decade later okay so there's some um, missing time in there yeah and then they jump back to an unspecified year so i'm not 100 percent sure where the next bit fits in the chronology but suffice to say it's somewhere in a decade okay I mean, it's super duper useful because yeah. the way the book is written is very, um, it definitely could have used an editor. Uh, it sounds like it. Yeah. Um, somewhere in this decade, something happened. Somewhere in this decade, something happened. So Harlan and Good. Billy uh, then at some point found several boars whose throats had been ripped out in situ by some predator. However, the creatures were not consumed. Okay. So... Hollyfield's book alleges that this doesn't fit the ML of any creatures in the swamp and seems to be more of a territorial killing. However, there's also like, so the, they weren't consumed, but like, I don't know. I feel like that's a, a stretch because there's also humans. The, yeah. The, the problem is anytime you throw humans in as an X factor, humans mess stuff up a lot. Yeah. It, it's humans are the X factor. So to yeah. Speak. Now, I don't know the swamp, and I don't know the I don't know, and the wiki article, as I mentioned before, is tainted by guerrilla marketing, mm -hmm. so I can't confirm or deny this, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I don't. I feel like I feel like the way that it's written, it's more trying to be like, oh, there has to be a monster because nothing could do this. Yeah, but weird stuff happens in nature all the time. All of the time. It's it's nature. It's mm -hmm. weird. Um, there's a reason I don't go outside. There's if we were supposed to be outside, then why do we invent the indoors? Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm an indoorsy boy. Very I'm an indoorsy. indoorsy boys. If I walk outside for too long, my skin catches fire. I've it's seen a fact. it. It's fact. Yeah, it's like no, it's Skyrim scary. Vampire. It's scary, mm -hmm. actually. Um, so after finding the uh, the hogs, and I want to make like a thirty to fifty hot wild hogs joke here so oh, bad, but I couldn't I couldn't work it in, and I felt like it would be weird because it would be like, wait, there were fifty, <laughs> there were fifty wild hogs murdered. <laughs> uh, oh. The legend states that Harlan found a set of unusual tracks described as having long clawed webbed toes with a human like arch and heel. Mm -hmm. It was at this point that Carlin got some plaster of Paris, plaster of Paris, uh -huh. and cast the prince to make the make what some, and I'm going to be honest, it's probably very few people consider a new, a now iconic cast of. Wow, I bat, I botched that sentence. Let me try that again. It was at this point that Harlan got some plaster of Paris and cast the prince. To make what some now consider an iconic cast of the Honey Island Swamp Monster. Now, uh, I've attached a picture. Yeah, I'm that's looking Harlan. At that. uh, and yeah. those are the uh, those are the the footprints. Now, none of them look like an actual animal foot. Well, no, they look kind of like alligator footprints. Oh, you know what? I, yeah. I, was, I was thinking like humanoid, like. In like it, oh ma like mammalian uh it's it's not mammalian at all there's no doubt about that it's not mammalian it doesn't fit the typical bigfoot pattern because his story up until this point is literally describing bigfoot like a bigfoot story right yeah 
But now with these footprints, it's like a reptilian uh, type story. Uh, 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 I'm looking at crocodile feet right now. Yeah. Um, crocodile feet usually have the three big toes and then the like phalange type thumb that's off on the side. Yeah, that's the big how that's, it goes. So like the in the picture, the one on the far left and the two, two on the far right would be the back feet, and then the two mm-hmm. little ones would be the front feet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, all right, mystery solved. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> let's 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 assume that it's not an alligator for right now. Okay. Because <laughs> otherwise, this podcast becomes very boring. <laughs> 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 now, you may be wondering, John, why haven't you cited any newspaper articles from the '60s? And the answer is completely and utterly simple. Harlan didn't come public with the sightings until 1974, when he had the casts. Huh. Yeah. So this might stink, but once again, for the sake of the story, I'm not going to say that this is an instant disprover. We'll just give him the benefit of the doubt and move on with the story. So, Will let's we, assume though? we are going to have to, because otherwise the episode's over, oh. and we still have, like, 40, 40 minutes left to fill, okay? Okay. <laughs> 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 and I wasn't I, after I devoted an hour to to fixing up the Wikipedia page for the Honey Island Swamp. <laughs> I am not going to just throw this research out. So, but for the sake of the story, let's assume that he may have wanted to keep a tight lip. Yes. Um, on it being an ex air traffic controller, right? Yeah. Uh, so hypothetically, the argument could be made that he kept the uh, sighting under wraps to avoid yeah. public embarrassment. And the fact that the Patterson Gimlin film was still four years out from the original sighting yeah. indicates that the pri- the public might not be primed for a Bigfoot like creature. It, he might not be, he might be ridiculed because yeah. Bigfoot's still not in the zeitgeist yet. It wasn't really until uh, what is it sixty seven when the the Patterson Gimlin film came out mm-hmm. um, that people started to accept Bigfoot as a concept, not necessarily yeah. believing he's real. But accepting him as a concept, okay. right? It's kind of like how aliens enter the public consciousness in the fifties, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Until that happens, you don't get anything. True. Um, that being said, there are flaws in the story, and we're definitely going to touch on those. No, more. it's a perfect story. Yeah. I mean, just don't uh, question it, John. Why would he question it? It's perfect. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm I'm wrong. Um. So cast in hands. Mm-hmm. Harlan sent them to the LSU zoology department, which could not af- identify the reptilian footprints. Okay. So, at this point, the story begins to pick up. People begin to come forward with their own individual tales about the monster. Dan Hollyfield hit something hit, hit something in his boat as night fell after turkey hunting, assuming it to be a log, and I'm assuming this is like a swamp flat boat, so it could probably mm. just, you know... Skid over it. Pop right over it, yeah. Yeah. Um, He looks back to check and sees something crawl out of the water and stand on two feet. Worried he just hit someone, he swings back around and sees the three-toed footprints matching the plaster cast from his father-in-law. Oh, yeah. Remember, uh, this is Harlan's uh, son-in-law. Oh, okay. (laughs) Um, Perry Ford and his wife Angie were camping in the swamp when they had, they heard something grunting and growling circling the campsite. Through the night, the possible creature got louder and louder, closer and closer, to the point that they thought they could hear it breathing. <sighs> Rum, ham. Oh God! <laughs> I was, you know, I was thinking about it. We haven't made anywhere near a Danny DeVito joke in like ten episodes, which is good for us. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a problem. We we need to go to Danny DeVito joke rehab. Uh, like it's <laughs> it's a problem. But the problem is, Danny DeVito is such a funny human being that he it's is. easy to make Danny DeVito jokes. It is. It's really easy, and I feel like he's cultivated this hu- this personality. Oh, he has. Um, I mean that's on him. Yeah. Yeah. This is actually kind of interesting because I I'll wait I'll wait for a second. Um, but they also were like building fires. Okay. To, like, scare it away or whatever. Yeah. And, like, they were building a bunch of fires or something like that. Um, there is a key detail, though. Okay. You might notice Perry's name is Perry Ford. 
Yes. Uh, I do believe that he is uh, a relative, a relative of Harlan Ford, because Dana Hollyfield in the book. This is just a family monster. It kind of is. It's just a family monster. It kind of is at this point. Now, before we say that, though, uh, not everyone who saw the monster was directly related to, to Harlan Ford. No, they're Ted cousins. Williams. They're, they're tangentially uh, related. What is happening in this story? I don't know. It's it's Brandon. It's about to get weirder too. Like once I get into the future, it gets stranger. Okay. Okay. So not everyone who saw the monster, however, was directly related to Harlan Ford. Ted Williams, a local who trapped and fished in the swamp, claimed to have several encounters with the swamp monster. And this is a direct quote from a in uh, an interview. Um, okay. I want to point out that in Dana Hollifield's book, <laughs> she gets the quote wrong. Oh, oh, come on. Because it's just zero effort. Because I found, I, I was originally going to copy her quote because he she has a quote too. Yeah. Um, But when I watched the actual video that it came from, it was wrong. It was improperly transcribed. Zero effort. And you, if you're publishing a book, at least put in some effort. Yeah. So. Oh, my God. I'm about to sneeze. Oh, get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Uh, no, it, it, it passed. <laughs> you absorbed it, passed. it. I watched you absorb the sneeze. That's how it happens. Um, okay. So this is Ted Williams speaking to an interviewer. First time I ever saw it was standing plumb still like a stump. I stopped and realized it wasn't a stump. And it wasn't supposed to be there. When it when I stopped, it ran. It was dark gray, about seven feet high. Seven foot high. Sorry. It jumped a bayou. That was the first time I saw it. The next time I seen him, he was swimming in the river, which is uh, specifically the Pearl River, which runs through the swamp. Yeah. Um, two of them, one was bigger than the other and faster than the other, and they swam just like a human with them long overhead strokes. So they're doing... Um, yeah, they're doing the overhead, like the tri- traditional swim. Um, I tried to get one of them to look at me, and the other one ran off, and the other one wouldn't look at me. I could have shot it, but I wouldn't on account it wouldn't look at me. Wait. Yeah, I don't know. Wait. Look at me when I kill you. <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, it looked too much like a. It looked too much like a human to me. Broad shoulders, arms hanging down below its knees. Hands looked almost like a human's. Um, supposedly, Ted Williams had more encounters with it, and he never, like, they never really bothered him, so he never did anything with it. Okay. Now, the Hollyfield book insinuates that Ted Williams may have been killed by the creatures. Wait, wait. <laughs> because wait. he disappeared in the swamp. And it was never seen again. Well, they found his dead body, but it wasn't, like, natural oh. causes. It was, like, he was probably attacked by an animal of some kind. Yeah. I mean, it's a swamp, so there's alligators, there's boars. Uh-huh. You got to actually be careful of boars. They're they're vicious little. Bastards. Oh yeah, they'll, they'll tear you up with them them tusks. Again, don't go outside. Um, that being said, I couldn't find corroborating evidence. I know that Ted Williams, the person, exists, mm-hmm. but I couldn't find like his obituary, okay. and I couldn't find like what happened to him. Mm-hmm. So. Going on just the word of Dana Hollifield, I'm not 100% comfortable uh, making that leap. Okay. Uh, so, before long, word would eventually reach In Search Of. Oh, nice. A television series produced by Alan Landsberg and nice, presented nice, nice, by nice, Leonard nice, Nimoy. Nice, 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 I think, nice. I think, I think we mentioned it once before on this podcast, uh-huh. maybe. I don't. I don't. I know none of my episodes mentioned in search of. I think one of yours did. Though. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's probably. Ooh, that's a long time ago. I think maybe the Mongolian yeah. death worm at some point. Yeah, yeah. So we don't talk about it much, but it was like a really big show back in the seventies, early eighties. Yeah. And did they do more recent ones, or are they all reruns? Um, they did do. They. I actually looked into the the Wikipedia page for this. They did do two revivals, but. Neither of them really took off. And actually, they used the actor for Spock from the new ser- the new movies. Oh, no, they did? <laughs> to do voice the Zachary voiceover. Quinto? Yeah. Oh. In one of them, which is 
kind of hilarious to me yeah. and like uh kind of fun. Mm-hmm. It, 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 they 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 had fun with it. That's all I'm gonna say. Um, so the episode was released in March fourth on Mar- March fourth, nineteen seventy eight. So four years after the the cast were made. Yeah. Uh, and is easily available on streaming sites. Like literally, you just Google in search of the Swamp Monster, you'll find mm-hmm. it. Um, the special largely follows Harlan Ford and his hunt for the monster. However, it includes interviews with Ted Williams, which the above in the above quote was from. Meaning, I could literally watch the interview while reading Donna Hollyfield's book oh. and see that it was totally wrong. Yeah. Um, that's, that's so good. Yeah. So, I mean, it was like paraphrase. That's the yeah. problem. Um, and Perry Ford, who, if you remember, was the one who was like circled. Yeah. It, it was actually kind of funny because they did a dramatic reenactment. I love those so much. And it's the most, it's the least dramatic reenactment that I've ever seen because they're just making fires around and like in broad daylight. That's fantastic. It's really funny. Did they at least it's... try to put like a filter on so it looked kind of No, dark? no, they didn't. No, they oh. didn't at all. It's actually really, really, delicious. really funny. Oh, it's uh, delicious. Let me, let me, let me jump to the point. I had the video oh. right here. Let me give you the, the bit. It's it's great too because it has the the classic uh, '70s like overly dramatic music too. Yeah, and they have for whatever reason, one of them is wearing a hard hat. They, oh, it's so delicious! Oh, it's just bright, and they're crouching for no reason. Yep, and they have just like five or six fires burning for whatever like. Yeah. And it looks like in an area with a lot reason. of dead leaves. Yeah, it looks super dangerous. But then oh. again, it's a swamp, so the odds of a swamp catching fire are low. So at least there's that. Um, oh, it's so but good. Yeah, they even found a. They even reenacted fi- him finding a track and pointing it out. So overall, while awesome because it's in search of. Yeah. The episode doesn't provide a wealth of new information. As no. I said before, a portion of it covers his monster hunting and examines the viability of living in the swamp, um, which it literally says it would need to be constantly moving. Mm-hmm. Um, it's actually really funny because if you go to minute 12, 30, there's a guy who's literally like fabricating like a, a monster suit for it. Oh at 12 yeah. 12 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah. It's actually hilarious. Like he's making a full on Honey Island Swamp Monster suit. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> so, according to the Hollyfield book, the episode caused a bit of a frenzy in the region while with people looking for the monster, which was fairly worrisome due to the inherent dangers of the swamp. Yeah. Um, I, I just, the other weird thing about this story is I couldn't find newspaper articles about it. Huh? Like I couldn't, like, I, I think there was a magazine article that was written at some point, but I couldn't yeah. even track that down. And like weirdly, well, not weirdly, but the Hollowfield book doesn't, um, doesn't really call out any sources for anything. Oh, even better. So it's that book kind keeps of getting better and better. Yeah, it's kind of difficult. Like there was also a section about like where she got a letter from someone after the fact and all that stuff. But yeah, I, 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 like I, I don't know the most of the stories are I saw it and it ran away. That a good story, bro. <laughs> or I saw it in the distance like, and it why? ran away. I don't know. It's just. It's weird. It's like a really, really weird thing. And and like this is my biggest problem with covering Bigfoots, Big Feet, is unless the stuff around it is interesting, Bigfoot sightings are kinda of boring yeah. most of the time. Like the Battle of Ape Canyon was cool. But like 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 if you look at the Patterson Gimli film, right? Yeah. It's interesting because it's it looks cool, but mm-hmm. it's probably just a Chewbacca suit. Yeah. Let's be real. Um, 
It looks cool, but me describing that is boring. Mm. Right? Yeah. I, I don't know. Bigfoot just seems to be more boring to me than most other monsters. Because... <laughs> Cause like at least at least in the case of like Mothman, you've got someone terrorizing people. Yeah. Right. In mm-hmm. Bigfoot, it's it most of the time it's just like I saw a really tall furry dude. <laughs> I know tall furry dudes. Mm-hmm. You're practically a tall furry dude. There's, you got that beard. I do have that beard. Uh, people you think I'm a beard. biker sometimes. It's pretty great. I can believe that, especially now that you're getting more tattoos. Yeah. It's it's more believable. <laughs> I have like a black denim jacket and a black beanie, and I'll wear like I got my boots and all that. But like, no. This well, no, no, I'm the least no. spikery. No, I know, I know, I know, I know you. <laughs> Other people don't. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> like I I sometimes wonder what people who see me think mm-hmm. because I got them broad shoulders. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But I'm a total, I'm a total pushover. What is complete it, pushover. Let's say my sister said uh, you look like you can throw a punch. Yes. <laughs> yeah. When was that? I think it was like John looks like he could throw a punch. Yeah, that was like right <laughs> after the um, uh, uh, Ninja New York. Yeah, yeah. In the uh, the Blossom mm-hmm. Festival. That's right. That's right. Oh God. Anywho, so for the remainder of Harlan's life. He was said to have continued his search for the monster. For the Rainmander? Huh? You said Rainmander. I just had to point that out. It's pretty oh, funny. Okay. It remainder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he always brought a Super 8 camera and a gun with him because this is America. <laughs> America. Um, there was one occasion where he even tried to bait the creature with a goat. Wait. Jurassic Park style. Wait. That's he- so good. He put a, he put the goat on like a flat, sat in a tree blind, and, and waited for the creature to come and eat the goat. Then what happened to the goat? Nothing. Well, I know nothing, but he he went he showed up with the goat, expecting to not have to deal with the goat when he goes home. I what mean, what happened I see- to the goat? Did he eat the goat? I don't know. The, there was a picture of the goat in the book, but that's about it. I mean. <laughs> I'm concerned about this goat. <laughs> the goat the goat story is lost to time. There's, uh, I'm sorry. Tisk tisk. So Harlan would ultimately pass away in 1980, apparently without proof outside of a few plaster casts of the monster. The story, however, doesn't end here because we still need 20 minutes of air to fill. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Uh, so in 1999, da- Dana Hollyfield, Dana, Dana, I think it's Dana, 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 Dana Hollyfield, granddaughter of Harlan Ford, wrote a book. Um, so she changed the names for the years, but the current name of it is Honey Island Swamp Monster, documentations in all caps. <laughs> In the book, oh. she collates a collection of stories about the Honey Island Swamp Monster, and of which I have a copy of the 2019 edition. Nice. Um, that's the one that's currently available on Kindle. So apparently she updated it this year. I, I don't know. Um, the book, which I've been using as a credulous source, as I mentioned before, is quite strange. The first page, and Brandon, you can yeah. click, uh, you can go to the... You can go to the Amazon page for this book, okay, and confirm this. But if you click on the look inside and then just scroll down a little bit, you'll see this. Uh, I'm sending you the link if you don't have it. There's the link. So if you click, if you click on the look inside, and then scroll down just a touch. Where uh, how do I say look inside? Just click the image. Just click the image. I like in there have been single highlights all over the world. So, am I reading the back of the book? No, no, no. So, Wait, all right, just scroll. I'll just, just click scroll. on your link because I just Google it. Yeah, yeah. So, ah, uh, there we go. Click the look inside. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. See all so, five formats. I'm uh-huh. a bad person. What? No, I don't, I don't understand. Click. I don't. I don't Brandon. understand how shopping works. Brandon, just just click 
click the click the little picture on the left hand side of the screen. Oh, look at that! Click it that. gets bigger, and you can. And flip. then you scroll down Wait. a little. <laughs> Wait. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So uh, the first page of the book is uh, photographs using a camera of the screen of five star book reviews from Amazon. Why? You can even you can even see the uh, the LCD Moira effect going yeah, on. Like they're a little bit crooked. I should leave a review that just tells her about how the snipping tool on Windows works. Yeah, yeah, or like print screen yeah. at least. So why? And then that picture's something. Yeah. Uh oh, the picture is definitely something. I'll tell you that much right now. And that now. font, oh, that's clearly like early two thousands, like ooh, the font ooh. that everyone did. The movie, the movie that she made is even better. Oh. Uh, um, I couldn't actually bring myself to finish it because everything was just repeated from what was in the book. Um. So. Not only that, but there are photos with no captions just scattered throughout. So, like, there's a picture of, like, a monster, and it's like, there's no caption on it. There's no explanation for it. It's just a picture of a monster. There's yeah. a picture of the swamp. No explanation for why that picture of the swamp was there. It's just there in the text. Fantastic. Um, also, the prose, somewhat difficult to read. Somewhat, like, crunchy, so to speak. Oh. Um, and like, I had to look at other sources to even understand the story sometimes. Oh Lord. Yeah. Uh, so as far as I can tell, it wasn't until 2005 when she made her documentary, the legend of the honey Island swamp monster, yeah. which was then renamed. Well, there's a second version of it called encounters with this honey Island swamp monster, uh, which you can watch on, on Amazon, which I did watch. Okay. Um, that the story, like, so the story is basically the same up until that point, right? Mm -hmm. Same general story. Most of the stories are the same. Most of the events are the same. No new evidence, no new nothing. In her research, she discovers an eight millimeter film taken from a tree blind, blind of a bipedal creature blurrily making its way through the swamp. Now, Brandon, you'll notice there is a link in the show notes, the show yes. copy. Click on that, and it'll take you to the footage. That. Okay. That. Okay. And if you click back a little bit, you can see what the original footage looks like, just like a little bit. Yeah, and I'm clicking around. Yeah. So this is the trailer for her thing, I think. Um... So you can't make out what that is literally at all. No. It actually, in fact, does look a lot like a person walking through the woods. Yeah. Um, but it's about seven seconds that you can see the creature for. Mm -hmm. And it looks suspiciously similar to the Patterson Gimlin footage. Yeah. That was my first thought. I was like, is this the Patterson? It's like, no, they're walking in the other direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... There are a lot of problems with this film, in case you haven't guessed. Yeah, clearly. Uh, first, the total film feels a little bit planned. Now, Ooh. nowadays, when you when you're dealing with film and cameras, it doesn't really. You, we basically have unlimited source space to to film a, yeah. a recording, right? Um, Super Eight cameras weren't the same. You had three minutes and thirty seconds available to film. That's it. Using two of these minutes, Harlan was able to film an establishing shot, the tree blind, and the creature. Now, some may say this is foresight. I'm slightly more skeptical. Um, if you want to capture a creature on film, why would you waste precious real estate, like literal real estate, <laughs> uh, on establishing shots up front? That just doesn't that doesn't make sense. You'd want to have as much film po as possible for yeah. recording the creature, right? Mm-hmm. Um, second, the film quality is so low that the creature could have literally been anything vaguely humanoid in the distance. It actually kind of looks like a person. Like It looks so much like a person. It looks a lot like a person. Finally, and the most important, uh, and to me, most importantly is what I wrote, but I, 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 I can't read. 
Um, so why did Harlan tell no one about the film? Why was the film discovered 25 years after his death and nobody in the family was aware of its existence? Yeah. I can understand maybe not showing the film to the public at large for reputation reasons or fear of hurting the people hurting themselves looking for the monster, but why not tell, you know, your wife, your grandkids, or at least take it home? Yeah. Well, no, they did. Okay. So the well, film you said it was, was in a tree blind. No, 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 no. The film oh. was taken in a tree blind. Oh, oh, oh. never they mind. They found mind. they found the Super 8 reel in a box of like nature photography that Oh, okay. Done. Yeah. So it and it had Honey Island Swamp Monster written on the top of it. Oh, of course, right? of course it did. Of course it did. So, like that's a really that sniffs bad, you know. Yeah, it, it it does sniff bad. It it's sniffs not, real bad. It's bad on my snoot. Cause like what what's the point, right? Mm-hmm. Like why why why? How how does it just? It rubs me the wrong way. And then if you layer on top of the fact that the whole thing feels staged because yeah. it probably was staged. There's no, it definitely won't. Like, like it's, yeah, I, I honestly think that this might have been one of those things where Harlan was planning on releasing it at some point. Yeah. But he died before he could release it. I mean, that's plausible. Yeah. I'm not sure, though. Like, you know, this is speculation on my part. Yeah. But total speculation. However, the real smoking gun to me is the shoe. Now, <laughs> while researching the video, the monster, and reading Hollyfield's book, I was alerted to the fact that there exists a shoe designed to make tracks which look suspiciously similar to the plaster cast made by Harlan in 1974. And I've included a picture which was copied from Hollyfield's book. Okay, yeah. That's looks like yeah. a like an alligator foot glued to the bottom of a leather shoe. It's pretty much what it is. Um, the shoe was found by M.K. Davis and J. Michael sometime around 2004 and seemed to look like an hour of our alligator oh, God, foot strapped exactly to a leather shoe. <laughs> I, d- I swear I did not read that before saying that. No, it, it literally looks like someone strapped an alligator foot to a shoe. Yeah. Um, it actually even has like a little bit of give. So yeah. when you're walking with it, it'll look like an actual foot yeah. pressing down instead of like, it'll actually make divots and stuff mm-hmm. that are not aligned with like it's it, it would basically the way it works is the foot bit will hang a little bit yeah so when you step on it it, it mimics what an actual creature yeah. like that would do as opposed to if you're using just something that's strapped directly to your foot so it's it's literally engineered to be more convincing than your standard wood block on a shoe um Hollyfield seems to think that the shoe is made by one of the film crews that decided to do visited and decided to do a reenactment and mistakenly left it behind. However, that really doesn't jive. Because why would the crew waste that time creating a shoe when they could literally just take a plaster reproduction that Hollyfield herself recreate or sells? Yeah. Cause she literally sells them. For twenty five dollars. Yes. Yes, she does. So but on the other hand, the fact that she sells these plaster cast reproductions just muddies the water even more because now anyone can get their hands on the Honey Island Swamp Monster footprint. Oh, that's true. So that's it's like very true. It, it makes things much worse. Yeah. <laughs> um, I in looking into this more, I found a graduate thesis on this topic oh, from 2004. Lord. Yeah. It was called The Honey Island Swamp Monster, The Development and Maintenance of Folk and Commodified Belief Tradition by Leary Francis, and it delves into the folklore surrounding the Honey Island Swamp Monster and how it propagated to the community. It's 181 pages long. I didn't read the whole thing. However, um, I did read the abstract, (laughs) (laughs) which which in academia is the most you can ever expect someone doing uh, when it comes to your thesis. Let me tell you. Uh, So I read the abstract and it actually looks like a very interesting take on Mm -hmm. the notion of folklore. And I think, I think this is how it works in this particular case. So the key takeaway is that it's a commodification of tradition, right? Okay. So you're commodifying the tradition in some way. Um, it asserts that the Honey Island Swamp Monster has become a commodity to Dana Hayfield, Hollyfield. Hayfield, wow. Mm. Um, 
In the past five years, the Honey Island Swamp Monster belief tradition has gained renewed interest, primarily due to the effects of one person, Dana Hollyfield. Hollyfield is Harlan Ford's granddaughter. And for her the, her, the Honey Island Swamp Monster tradition serves as not only an informative and cultural commodity through which she can share the experience of her grandfather, but also primarily as a financial commodity, which she utilizes to promote her business interests. Mm-hmm. So basically what that's saying is the myth has become something more, right? Yeah. It's now representing their swamp, mm-hmm. right? It's representing their home. So as a result of that, um, it becomes this commodity and people are more willing to latch on to it, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. if, you, if you need that thing, you need that grounding, you'll, you'll latch on to it. And I, I think it's a fascinating way to look at monster stories, actually. Yeah. No, it because is. Totally if you think is. about it, if you think about it in that context, suddenly it's less about uh, making yourself more impressive, making yourself look better, and it's more about making the places that you value more valuable. Yeah, totally. Right, and I, I never really have looked at it in that sense, like because it's not necessarily underhanded; it's a part of your identity at that mm-hmm. point, which is cool. To me, yeah, I think it's cooler than the monster itself. It is totally because no, it totally the monster, is. the monster itself, is probably just just literally Harlan walking around in the forest with uh, the, the swamp with alligator feet, alligator feet. Yeah. So I, I, I'm just telling you right now, the Honey Island Swamp Monster. I don't think it's real because no, it doesn't. I don't either. I mean, I think it's probably real. Like, there's a lot of this evidence that you can't uh, refute, and um, mm-hmm. it's really. I mean, nail in the coffin. This thing's real. Brandon, uh, Lauren Coleman doesn't think it's real. Yeah, but it's real. But Lauren Coleman doesn't think it's real. It's real and though. He is. It's he is the though. most. He's the most credulous person I've ever like encountered on the internet in regards to this kind of stuff. It's real though. Okay. Okay. Um. So whether or not Harlan Ford saw the monster in the swamp back in the sixties, I'm leaning towards not. The tradition lo- lives on through the work of his granddaughter, who has a vested interest in the continuation of this myth the story now not, not only acts as a thread connecting to her to her deceased grandmother grandfather but it acts as financial support her books incorporate the swamp monster whether they be the primary source of this episode or cookbooks she or mentions cookbooks. the swamp she has cookbooks and she mentions the swamp monster in it that's like, so good frequently uh the members of the community who claim to have seen the monster in the intervening years there are more and but the stories are standard fare um, to them, the myth represents a portion of the supernatural making their home more interesting, as I said before, mm. to the outside world. Although, from an ecological standpoint, the swamp is plenty interesting. Yeah. Right? Ultimately, I think that the monster is a hoax cooked up by Harlan and Bobby to add zest to their retired ATC life. Um, the story was then expanded on by Dana Hollifield, who has now integrated it into her financial and personal identity. And I think that's the heart of this story. Which is interesting because this is more than any of the other cryptids we've ever done. Like, it's a personal cryptid for this this person. Mm -hmm. I think maybe the Ropin was another personal cryptid, but this one is... Yeah. This one somehow feels less scummy than the Ropin. But at the same time, it's kind of scummy. Well, there's the Ropin, there was like an end goal. Yeah. This, This is more about... This seems more about like commodifying something than anything else. I have a coda, though. Okay. So, on uh, Dana Hollifield's website, um, her, like, whole commodification of this monster integration into her personality Mm -hmm. is, like, totally codified by this blurb that's at the bottom of the website. Oh. (laughs) I learned about a doll by Mattel that was created for the Monster High series. Her name is Honey Swamp, and she is the daughter of the Honey Island Swamp Monster. She was a fashion model in Hollywood that they called Hauntlywood. She is also from New Gorleans, a.k.a. New Orleans. She is an inspiring cinematographer and also likes to cook. I am an aspiring cinematographer slash photographer and was a fashion model in Hollywood before returning to New Orleans. I also like to cook, and that is why I have published cookbooks. So, I think Mattel and Monster High use my likeness. What do you think? Here's a link to the the Honey uh, Swamp... Honey Swamp Monster High doll that is still available on Amazon. I think she is now collectible. 
so you may want to get one while they're still around. I would like to know your opinion on this matter if you have time. You can fill out the comment box below. Thanks. And I've attached a picture of Honey Swamp. She's and a trying of to get that cash. Get money, get paid, girl. It that doesn't... also looks more like old Greg. Yeah, it looks nothing like her. No, not at all. Nothing like her. So it's definitely not copying her likeness. I doubt that it's copying her whole thing because I I have this feeling that Mattel didn't do the research. No, probably not. I, it's probably I just think, like Honey Swamp sounds like a cute na- like monster name and they pro- someone probably heard about it or learned about it when researching monsters. That's like, almost definitely what happened. Yeah. Like it was on an in search of episode. Yeah. Like, like it's a part of the public zeitgeist. It's yeah. there's anywho. One final note. Hollyfield was in a trauma film. Oh, nice. <laughs> she was in Fraternity Demon, which was riffed on in episode 64 of Rooster Teeth's theater mode. I'm pretty sure I found her in the concert scene because I was curious. Nice. Um, warning, though, the concert scene that she's in is basically an orgy. Nice. <laughs> nice, 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 nice. Um, because, so, the plot is there's a demon lady, and the demon lady starts singing, and it causes everyone to get super duper randy. Nice. And that's that's the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So. um, But, yeah. Oh, you, you clicked it? I clicked it, but then I didn't, like, on the VR, like, I didn't feel like logging in. Oh, yeah. It's about uh, the the concert scene starts at about an hour in, roughly. Okay, like I'm logged signed in on Roku, so after here I can just go <laughs> go look at I, it. Yeah, I I I think I was like scrubbing because I was curious because like I'm like I don't remember any of the characters from that movie. No. Um, because it's like I've watched this movie before because I watched all of theater mode. Mm-hmm. Um. But yeah, I think she pulls a guy into a, a bedroom at one point. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's 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 just a bizarre. <laughs> it's a bizarre side note that like yeah. is a weird synchronicity. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so that's all I got on the Honey Island Swamp Monster. It's honestly not that interesting of a monster, but the story around it's kind of cool. Yeah, definitely. Um. Anywho, so as always. Our website is CryptopediaCast.com. Instagram and Twitter are at CryptopediaCast. If you want to email us, CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We have a Patreon. Um, We're supported in part, well, exclusively pretty much by (laughs) you guys. Um, And we still make enough money to keep the lights on, which is nice. Um, So as always, we should probably do our our now every episode thank you to our Patreon uh, Folks, uh, mm-hmm. do you want to go this time, Brandon? I think I did it last time. Yeah, we're going to thank our Jackalope's Clay Sinclair. That's my S Saturday Night Live uh, mm-hmm. intro voice. And then yeah, yeah. Marty Von Party, because he likes to party. Nobody can party like Marty. No one can Ain't party, no party like, like Marty. a Marty party. Um, if you enjoyed the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe. Um, and if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. Uh, we have a, I have personally like i think five monsters in progress so oh i've got one sort of kitten i've got one that um literally some guy i was at just hanging out in the parlor and some guys wanted to get a month like a monster tattooed on him i was like wait mm-hmm. what's that tell me about it so he just started going over like the folklore and stuff and i was like uh-huh. there might be enough and then i did some googling and there might actually be enough oh nice so thanks to the like Overly Irish guy. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, we we, you know, it, it just takes time. These these yeah. things take time. Um. So yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I was like, "What's he doing?" Also, I'm getting, I think, a spam call. I don't know. Um, I get a lot of spam calls. Yeah, like they picked up a lot recently. Yeah. Um. You can find me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com. My email is brandon at cryptopediacast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon, capital C, capital B. On Instagram, I'm mu2057. On Twitter, JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. 
Our art was done by Tom Hill. You can find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com and his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. As always, I'm John. I'm Brandon. And things are going to get weird.